I plan on doing some sewing for Christmas and that means starting early. Usually I will start in the summer um, for Christmas time and just work little bits on things throughout the year. This year has definitely not been that way for me, partly because I've been making videos and trying to kind of plan out content for you guys, partly because, and you've probably seen the video by now, we're moving and in, in the holiday season. So between Thanksgiving and Christmas, we're moving to another state, like far away. And I have to pack up this house and a lot of things. There's a lot going on. So I am way behind on my Christmas sewing, but we are gonna start today with stockings and they're a super easy and fun project. I'm gonna grab all this fabric. If you watched my Etsy haul, you saw some of these Christmassy fabrics. I'm choosing this year, I want more of a mid-century modern sort of look and I've gotten some really um, fun, cute fabric. So I'm going to be combining these. I just need four stockings, um, my three kids and a kid partner. But let me show you what I do have for you. If you go to my website, sosterip.com, I'll put it down here for you and it'll be down in the description if you just want to click on it. I've made a stocking pattern that you can just print out. So you just have to tape it together and I'll show this over. I'm actually going to tape this together and show you how it goes together when we go to the cutting table. But it's just three pieces of paper to print out to make a little stocking. Now this is not a giant stocking. Sometimes you see those huge stockings. My kids are adults. Um, I call them kids, but they're not. They're grown-ups, all of them. And this is more just fun for mom. I don't know that they care that much about it, but I, as, you know, I'm a mom. I'm not letting go <laughs> of anything until I have to. So I'm making stockings for my kiddos and I really enjoy it. So we're, but they make them small because they are adults and it, you know, we're not sticking um, Barbies and Tonka trucks and stuff in them anymore. We're putting gift cards and that sort of thing in them. So we're, you can go print this out. You'll need a main body, which is the stocking or the boot of it. So you'll need one fabric for that. And then you'll need another fabric that will be the cuff. That's how I'm choosing to do it. So you'll need two fabrics. And I'll, I'm, I haven't decided what fabrics I'm gonna be putting together. I have a yard of everything. Um, and then you'll also need a lining. So this is my lining I think I'm going to use for all of them. And you'll need some fusible batting. That's what this stuff is. And it's just really fine, thin batting, not real heavy at all, with glue on one side. And it just makes life easier if you can um, fuse it, um, just to do a temporary fuse while you're sewing it. Stockings, especially like this, are super fast because they sort of self-line and there's not much to it. You also want a piece of ribbon or um, something similar to make a little loop so that they can be hung. Um, if you're going to, <clears throat> if you want to, like I have an, a machine that does embroidery, um, or if you want to hand stitch it, it's best to take the piece, the little cuff, if you're going to do it on the cuff, or if you're going to do it on the boot, to take this piece and um, trace it onto the fabric, but don't cut it out so that you have a wider piece so that you can easily hoop it to either go on your machine or hoop it if you're going to do some hand embroidery. So just trace the shape on there um, and do your embroidery first, then cut them out. That makes it a lot easier for you if you're going, if you're planning on doing embroidery, or even um, <clears throat> if you're doing applique. It's a little different. You could probably cut it out for applique. Uh, I'm not going to do any of those. I'm going to actually just make a little cute tag that hangs down with the name on them, so that they don't, they're not specific to anyone. They're just sort of generic little stockings. So, because again, they're adults, and I may reuse them just as decor. This fabric you're gonna see again in another video, or actually a couple videos. But we're gonna head over and um, put these together. If you have a rotary mat and rotary cutter and you're making a whole bunch of the same thing, this is the perfect project for that because you can stack and cut and get it all cut out at once. So if my rotary cutter's not completely dull, I will be doing that too. So let's head over to the cutting table and I'll show you what to do next. So here are my little stocking parts. I've started to cut them apart. And you can see there's these little sort of knot shapes right here, and that's just to show where to match these two up. You can kind of see the size now next to my hand. They're not huge. These are little ones. Now, if you like this shape, but you want a bigger stocking, 
it would be very easy to trace all the way around this a half an inch and make a bigger stocking. You could lengthen it. Like it's, it's stockings are easy to um, adapt and alter. This is the little cuff, and it has little circles right here, and that just matches to the little circles at the top of the boot, and that's just to show these are going to match up to each other later. And I hope you can see the shadowing through. Let me cut this out real quick. These are only quarter inch seam allowance on this. I'm just going to lay, here's my boot. I'm going to just lay this on top so you can kind of see. And you can see how it just sort of hangs off on each end just a tiny bit. And that just, I just like the look of that. That just gives a little bit of shape instead of being exactly the same size. Again, you can use this as a starting point and enlarge this how, however you want to. You could make a stocking without a cuff very easily because we're lining it. That's um, an easy thing to adapt. So now that we've got our pattern prepped, we're going to go pull out our fabrics and start stacking and cutting. What I'm doing is deciding what I want to be boot and what I want to be cuff. So I'm just sort of stacking and looking. And I definitely like these two together. I like these two together. So that's a stocking. And I think I'm going to do a blue one. Look at how I just love this Nomi stuff. And this is really cute. So I might do those two together this and then this is my lining so I'm going to lay this out and I'll show you and cut eight of these because this is the lining I need two per for lining this would also make a cute little cup if I want to but I think I'm going to stick to lining for it so I'm going to cut out eight of those for lining and then I'm going to cut eight cuff pieces but it'll be two of each one that I make a cuff out of and I'm going to cut eight boot pieces two per body so I'm going to show you how to stack and cut and then the same with this um, <clears throat> I'm going to be cutting eight pieces of this for, of the boot and eight pieces of this for the cuff. You do not need this for the lining. The lining doesn't need to have the this in it. So this is my rotary cutter. I really like this one because it has a natural little guard. It's just a little safer than some and it's also ergonomic. It's very comfortable. My poor little cutting mat down here has seen better days but just cut out. Okay, these are cuff. This is cuff. This could be stocking too. That is so cute. I just love that one. I love this one too. Lay these over. Now, if you're using a fabric like I was just saying, where you have to really think about what you're, where you're putting your pattern placement, you do not want to stack and cut this side. Okay. This is the only one that's going to be give me the trouble. The others are pretty easy. So we're folding all of them the same dimensions. You can see how much fabric I'm going to have left over. So we are layering and cutting and we're just folding over and just making sure they're the same every time. I'm getting my fold lined up. Okay, I just love the Nomi stuff. That's so cute. And nutcrackers. This would also make a good cuff because it's a nice dense. Um, these are also directional so you want to make sure you don't cut your boots upside down. all lined up and I'm looking up here at the corner and I'll show you a different angle so I can make sure they're lined up properly and let's just check our stocking yeah see that fits on there just right yes, I just love this fabric so much I'm tempted to just do a stocking out of this instead because there's less white space and it's so colorful and cute I think this will be a stocking and it will be a cuff because we can do that now if you, you're you using a rotary, you can pin this down or you can use weights to lay it down. I'm just making sure that I'm catching all of my layers. I'm going to show you how it looks at the top so you can see what I'm doing. Here's my fold over and I'm just making sure they all line up the same here for cutting. So, I've just put a few pins in because my weights are already packed away. And I actually need new weights. And now we're ready to cut. With the rotary cutter, you can just come in. You have to be really careful. If you've not used them before, rotary cutters will cut through your hand. They will cut through carpet. You do not want to cut with one of these without the special self-healing mat under it. If you cut on this, like on this table, it will 
permanently damage the table. It will be ruined. It will cut through your carpet, through the padding, all the way down to whatever's underneath, wood or, or concrete. So you must use a self-healing mat if you're using a rotary cutter. Otherwise, this is thin enough. If you're strong, you probably could cut it with scissors. I don't have that many layers. Here are four layers. So we're just going to come in with our cutter. I know it's going to be wobbly. Pardon, my tape is going to wobble a little. You can also tell if your cutter is getting dull. And mine is. I can tell it's having a little bit of a hard time cutting through all the layers. I think I need to change out my... Let's see, is it cutting? See, I've got a little spot right there where it's not cutting through. Must be time for a new... It's time for a new one. So we're going to change it real quick. I've always kept the little case these come in because you don't want to just throw that in the trash. That for sure will slice right through your trash bag and um, cut somebody. We don't want that. So I've always kept the packaging like this and I put it in the packaging and I throw it away in the packaging so that it's safer. So that's going in the trash. Um, Lots of interesting things like that. Okay, let's see how it cuts now. Okay, so we're just gonna cut these out. All right, I decided to use this adorable fabric for a cuff, and I'm centering a cuff right on it. So I'm not layer, this is not a stack and cut for sure. I want to get that little cute scene perfect. So I have actually laid house upon house. They're slightly different. No, nope, it's the same one. It's the same one, just reversed because it's the back side. But anyway, we're going to line that up. And there's quarter inch seam allowance, which means that I will get pretty much exactly those little houses perfectly centered in my cuff. So cuff one, got the rest to cut out of here. We're all cut out. And the first thing we're going to do is go to the ironing board and we're going to fuse. We're going to fuse our um, batting to our fabric. And there is a side that you can feel. One side feels just soft and the other side feels prickly a little bit, and that's the glue. The glue will go to the wrong side of the fabric, and you'll notice that my little um, pattern is slightly, it's not even on each side. Like, I have actually made it so that it's, there's a right and a left. If you don't like that, you can even that out for yourself. So we're going to fuse this to the back. So I'm just gonna sit and fuse everything really quickly, and then we're gonna start sewing. It sews up really fast. The other thing we need to do is cut our ribbon or your um, whatever you choose to use for your hangers for this. Um, but this is what I'm going to use. It's just a plain little satin ribbon that I'm going to catch, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to cut my ribbon, I think about seven inches, um, so that when it's folded over and caught, we have about a three inch drop, something like that. You can make it longer or shorter according to how you want it. I'm just thinking about it hanging off the mantle, because mine will hang on a fireplace. It's the, the hooks that you can pull off that don't damage in the end. I usually stick those either on the top of the mantle or on the underneath, depending on um, how the fireplace is shaped. And then I just need enough to let it drop from those little clear hooks. So seven and, a, seven and a half inches, seven inches or so usually works good for me. And so I'm gonna cut my four strips of ribbon too so that I have everything sort of ready to assembly line because I'm just gonna sew stocking, 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 stocking and have four stockings done. Since I'm fusing, i am laid down my silicone mat to protect my ironing board and I've laid all of my little cuff pieces face down. And the first thing I'm going to do is just give them a good press. You can see how this was on the fold and I'm gonna press them real smooth first and then I'm gonna come back and lay the fusing down on top of each one. Whoops, I got this upside down. Like this. Um, and just gently press them on. Now this is not like a hard press. It'll stay on forever. It's just to keep it together while we're sewing. So I'm not real worried about being really, really, really stuck. Just so it stays together for sewing. So I'm going to do this for the cuff and for the boot. You do not need to do it for the lining. O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells and bobtails ring. I'm getting 
getting ready to assemble and I realized that I forgot to have you cut lining for all of the cuffs too. So I'm gonna go cut lining. I'm cutting it out of the same fabric that I cut for the boot. I'm just gonna go cut eight little lining pieces and then we'll be back to assemble. Don't know where my head was. Actually, I do know. I left my sheet with my directions to myself in here and was in the other room cutting. Can't do that. <laughs> And we're going to start by just searching around. You can definitely do this at the sewing machine. We're gonna search all the way around the decorative side of the boot. So I'm gonna do all four boots. We're not going to do the top. We're gonna to go around the outer edge at a quarter inch. And the reason I serge this personally is that it compresses this. It's a sort of a thicker um, layer because of the batting. So when you serge it, it actually helps compress that outer edge. Now if you don't have a serger, you can just go to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch all the way around. So I'm going to do all of the boots that way. For the lining, we're going to put our lining, again, always right sides together. We're going to put our two little lining pieces together, right sides together like this. Oh, full disclosure, I have to tell you, after I started cutting with this, with that rotary cutter, even after I changed the blade, it was not cutting well. So I take it back. That is not my favorite rotary cutter. It really stinks even with a new blade on it and I've got to find something better. I have some other really old ones that, I, that weren't working great either. So I just need to do some research on rotary cutters and get a much better one than I had. It, I ended up having to cut it all out with my scissors. It just didn't work at all. So right sides together. I'm going to sew at the sewing machine around this quarter inch, leaving the top open, but I'm actually going to leave a hole. Now, you can leave the hole here or down here in the boot, but you need a hole big enough that we're gonna pull this whole thing through when we're done. So we need a turn through hole. So for me personally, I think it's just easier to leave the hole here on the side of the back of the boot. It's just nice and flat and it'll be an easy place to sew it back up. So for the boots, uh, for the linings, we're going to sew all the way around and make a little marking for yourself where you're gonna stop. So for me, I'm gonna leave like a four inch space like this. So I'm gonna sew all the way up to here, do a little back stitch. And then I'm gonna come from the top and do a little back stitch. So I have a little hole right here for pulling it through. So I'm gonna go sew all of my boot lining and the regular pieces together. And then I'll come back and show you how to do the cuffs. These cute, okay, look at these little boots. These little stockings. Okay, those are cute. I'm just gonna admire them. I'm looking in a little viewfinder. <laughs> Loving it. So, so cute. So now we've got these done. I would suggest when you're sewing this, because I did leave you such a narrow seam allowance, to check it with, um, before you turn and press to make sure that you don't have a little place where it's a little too narrow. And then I've gone ahead and done the same thing. Here's my um, lining. So I have my lining, so my boots done. Now we're working on cuff and we're going to just take all of our little lining pieces and put do, make a pair of right sides together and we're going to sew these two outer edges but don't sew the top or the bottom and we're going to do the same thing with the decorative piece and I did this I did it the same way I did just at the sewing machine on the lining and at the serger on this one and then we're going to take the lining and you could press this first which I would recommend always press your seams we're going to flip the lining around to the right side so we have right sides together. And the way I made the little cuff is, hopefully you can see it, but it's narrower at one end than the other. The, the narrow end is what's going to get sewn to the little boot stocking part. This is the hem of the cuff. So we're going to line these up and we're gonna sew around the hem. So we're putting right sides together, matching up our little seams like this. Okay, so here's the wider edge and we're just going to sew around that. Let me open it up. So we're just going to sew around that circle and then this will flip around and it'll be self-lined. So I'm going to sew that really quick and show you how that looks. You can serge this or sew that. Sew it. I'm, I think I'm going to serge it and everything's going to get a little pressing and then I'll show you how to flip it around. And then we're ready to assemble the stocking. At this point, the stocking, we're really close. This is, I'll, I give you the, we're almost done warning already, but this goes really fast. That's why I like this project. You could, and I didn't mention this before, before you put your little stocking together, um, you could, if you wanted to do little quilting lines in it, you could do some little straight stitching to make this more quilted looking because we do have the batting behind it if you want to. I don't want that look myself, but it's certainly an option before you sew it together. And when you just have the batting fused, you can stitch through that and get you sort of a quilting line if you wanted to do that. 
Okay, I'm gonna sew all these little cuffs and then I'll show you how to assemble. Oh my goodness, we're so close to being done. It's not even 9.30 yet this morning. I'm gonna be done with all of these by 10. I love a project like that. Okay, we're going to start assembling. This is how the little cuffs currently look. The lining is on the inside. Here's the outer side and we've got right sides together and they've been stitched along the wide edge, the bottom edge. So then now when we flip them out, they look like this. And then you fold back in the lining side and we have a lined cuff and I would definitely iron it at this point. So I'm gonna go press all of these so they stay in place. If you wanted to, you could top stitch this. If you wanted to put fringe in it, put fringe in before you sandwich and sew around so you can have fringe in that little seam. But I'm gonna flip all these and press them and then we're ready to assemble. As I'm turning to press these, I'm noticing how cute it looks. Look at how cute that is to have just a little band of another fabric along the edge. So that could be something an easy design detail to add a little piece of bias or cut one of the cuffs a little bit longer, um, the, the lining cuff, so the lining peeks out if you do a cute decorative lining. But this is how they're starting to look so far before I, I'm just matching the cuff to the stocking before I get ready to assemble. We're going to start assembling. So I have got my boot, my little stocking, and my cuff, and I've just pulled the cuff up I got them lined up at the top, and the way I designed the pattern was it, there's a little side of the cuff that kind of comes out more, and that's what I consider to be the front of the cuff. It's up on the front of the toe. So we've got that on there, and then we're going to take one of our little ribbons, or whatever you're using for the hanger, and we're going to fold that in half, and I'm going to line that up. All this is going to get pinned right here. So I'm going to put a pin in that and hold it, and I'm going to pin to the top like so. And then we're going to take a lining, and all of this is going to get shoved down in the lining. And we can kind of just fold it up and stick it in. It's going to be kind of bulky. And we're going to sew all the way around all these layers. We're lining up front edge to front edge. So here's my seam of the lining. And you could definitely do this so that the you flip this around and the boots on the inside, or your stockings inside out, and the linings on the inside if you wanted to, however you think is easiest. So here's all my layers lined up at that seam. I'm going to pin it into submission here. And you can see it makes it pretty tight because so there's a lot going on, but it, they do match up. We're going to do the same thing on this end. And at this point, this is the back of the boot. We've got our lining, our hanger, our cuff, and our stocking. So I'm going to pin through all those layers. Maybe put another pin or two in just to keep all of these edges lined up nicely. And we're just going to sew around that circle. And then it's ready to pull through and flip to the inside. So I'm going to do this for all four of my little stockings. We're going to sew around this edge. I'm going to search this. You could totally sew it at the sewing machine. And then we'll be ready to flip. So once I get these sewn, I'll show you the flipping process. I've got lots of little stocking bundles here. And I'm just going to go around this upper edge really quickly. Um, you can search it. You can do it at the sewing machine. You can take your sewing table off or raise it up so you can do the free arm if you have the free arm option and just sew around it really quick and then we will pull it through so let me give it a quick stitch let's see I think I'm gonna serge it because it's thick and if I use the overlock it helps compress that heavy edge I've been listening to Christmas music while I'm doing this Christmas sewing to get me in the mood all right so I'm going all the way around my boot, and it's sealed the top now, and that's why we left this hole in our lining. So we've, we're going to just pull the stocking through that little hole in the lining. We end up with something that looks like this. And now we're ready to go ahead 
and sew this little thing shut at the sewing machine. So we're just going to fold it in on itself. Really narrow little straight stitch right along there. Then the lining gets shoved down inside and we have a stocking. So let me just sew up. Okay, here we are lined up. I just back stitched. You can see how close to the edge I'm stitching. And we just sealed up that hole. This will just flip to the inside. Push it down into the toe. So that's how it looks. There it is on the inside. If this lining's pulling up, I would recommend running a little running stitch. You can hand do it by hand. I was going to do it on my sewing machine, but my free arm's just bulky enough that I made the stocking a little too tight and it just won't go around. So but that's the little stocking. And because of how I personally designed it, they can be hung facing right or left. They're exactly the same either way. And then I'm going to um, hang a cute little tag that hangs down with their name on it for who gets which stocking. If you want a big stocking, you can take the pattern I made and just bulk it up. You can add seam allowance around the outer edge and make it bigger if you want to. And then there's the little cute lining on the inside. All right, let me get the others done and I'll show you all of them together. Dashing through the snow In a one-horse open sleigh 